You're back in the shop with me tonight, guys. This week on the channel, we're gonna continue our series on how I film in my wood shop. And this week, we're gonna do audio. So stick around. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company, and let's build something. Ta-da! All right, so let's start with the basics. Now the volume and the audio you're hearing right now is the actual camera from the Sony camera that I have. And keep in mind, everything I show you or talk about in this video will be linked in the description below. And if you like videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Do it, and do it now. So you can tell that the audio is very echoey and kind of out there, and you really need to be up on the camera. Even though this Sony camera praises itself on having a good microphone. I think that's true, but the microphone's actually on top of the lens. So you have to kind of throw your vocals over there. So it's picking up and broadcasting such a wide range of audio. Now, if this is all you have, you can fix it in post if you want to get crisp, clear vocals and audio and overlays and stuff like that. Now, there's nothing wrong with just using the camera mic. It's gonna pick up background noise like ambulances or cars driving by, and the range is gonna be a little more broadcast and out there. But stick around to the end of the video and I'm gonna show you my favorite way to get the best audio in your shop. The second microphone that I went with was the Rode Compact Shotgun Microphone. It was about 60 bucks, and I paired that with the Ceramonic two gang mixer. Now this mixer is powered by the camera, not by a battery. If I could do this over, I would definitely get the one that was powered by a battery separate from the camera. And that way I could control the right and the left and I could turn it up on the actual mixer instead of having to go into the camera settings and turn that up. Now this is a directional mic and this was my second attempt and it actually worked out well for quite a long time. But I live on kind of a busy street and plus I have a fire department and ambulance close by to me so they're constantly going. Or if someone comes by with bass or something like that, you can hear their cars roll by and you can hear that background bass. Now just listen for a second and you can hear all that background noise. I'm also close to Austin's airport, so when planes fly by, I could hear that in my audio, and then I would spend time in editing, trying to cut that out or reduce background noise, and it was just kind of getting a little tedious, and so I came up with the third option, which is my favorite option, and stick around until the end, I'm actually gonna give you three cool tips for the best option. Let's now here it is. This is the best microphone I found for my shop. It's the Rode Wireless Go microphone. It was $200 and it has a base unit that's on the camera and then it has an actual unit that's on me that doubles as a lapel mic. Now I have bought a lapel mic for about 40 bucks. It's not the best one. I wish I would have bought a better one, but I can put the sound right here. It reduces background noise, because remember you heard all those planes and sirens coming by, and it really puts the sound right at my chest. And I can go all over the shop and get the same level of audio. And that's really what we're looking for when it comes to audio, a consistent audio level, so that when we're editing, we're not working extra hard at editing. So the Rode Wireless Go, now I don't team it with that little mixer that I got because the mixer's not independently powered and the Rode Wireless Go doesn't have the power to power the mixer, if that makes sense. So here are my three favorite things about the Rode Wireless Go. The fact that it picks up audio right where I need it to pick it up, right off of my voice. The other cool thing is when I disconnect it from the lapel mic, and this is the actual transmitter, this becomes a lapel mic. So I can stick this on the side of my jacket or use it as a lapel mic anywhere I go. So it's really just three pieces, this, the transmitter, and something to plug it into. Another thing I love about it is I can actually plug it into my phone. When I'm out filming, I can get really crisp audio using just this without the lapel. This is my new lapel, and I think that's really cool. Another cool feature, I could just take a paint stick and I could just clip it to the end of the paint stick, and now I've got a little interview mic. And so I'd be able to walk around and interview people like, hey, do you like this channel? Yeah, I sure do. You know, stuff like that. And so the clip actually, and they do sell a little stand for this, like a little microphone stand. I think it's silly, you could make your own. That's my second favorite thing. And my next favorite thing is once I get it plugged in to the actual jack, ran up my shirt, set in my pocket, it's going. I love that. I don't have to think about it. It's not cumbersome. It's not one of those big jacks you used to put on the back, like back in the 80s and 90s. I don't know if anyone remembers that stuff, but there's going to be some cool stuff coming up. So check that out right here, guys.